Hey, it's Jordan with Status Coup. Breaking news on day 27 of the United Auto Workers strike. The UAW has now expanded its strike uh, specifically against Ford with one of Ford's most profitable plants that builds its trucks now going on strike in Kentucky. This just came out about 20 minutes ago uh, and is one of the bigger plants uh, and most profitable plants that is now on strike specifically against Ford. Uh, let me give you some of the details here. Uh, UAW strike day 27, UAW orders 8,700 to walk out at Ford's Kentucky truck plant. So that, if I could do math, brings this to almost 34,000. Almost 34,000 UAW workers are now on strike between Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis. United Auto Workers Union is sending workers at Ford Motor Company's highly profitable Kentucky truck plant on strike. The union announced the escalation of its targeted plant walkout about 6.35 p.m. Wednesday night. Uh, the plant produces Ford Super Duty trucks and a pair of large SUVs, the Ford Expedition and the Lincoln Navigator. UA spokesperson, UAW spokesperson didn't immediately provide clarification. Uh, I reached out as well. A walkout at the Kentucky plant would add significantly to the 25,300 auto workers on the picket lines at select four GM and Stellantis facilities across the country. The strike, which union leaders have said could expand at any time, depending on progress at the bargaining table, has included Ford's Bronco and Ranger plant in Wayne and its Explorer and Lincoln Aviator plant in Chicago, Stellantis's Jeep Wrangler and Gladiator plant in Toledo. Uh, we have covered both on the ground. Uh, and GM's midsize pickup and commercial van plant in Wentzville, Missouri, and its Chevrolet Transverse and Buick Enclave plant outside Lansing. We've also been there. Strike has resulted in tha thousands of layoffs at the automaker and their suppliers. Blue Oval SK, the joint venture between Ford Motor Company and battery manufacturer SK On, isn't done building three battery plants in Kentucky and Tennessee, but it's already offering higher wages to prospective workers. So let me give you a few things here, and I could just show you this is, as we speak, uh, these workers walking. So here is images of workers uh, coming out of this plant. I pretty sure uh, this was all a surprise to them. Uh, again, this is nearly 9,000 workers in Kentucky. So this will be a massive picket line. Uh, that's them uh, coming out at, I guess, 530 uh, is Kentucky Eastern time. I don't even know. Uh, so yeah, this was totally unexpected on their part. Uh, you also have UAW President uh, Sean Fain tweeting out, or the UAW tweeting out, I should say. President Fain and Vice President Browning called in Kentucky members to strike directly after Ford refused to make progress in bargaining. Uh, I don't have specific intel. I've been working on my book all day. Uh, again, I, I just got a book deal, which I'm super excited about. So I'll be working on that for the rest of the month because I got to finish the book <laughs> by the end of the month. Uh, I have a migraine just thinking about it because I have so much more to do, uh, but I will be on air uh, for breaking news like this. So uh, my my best guess, uh, Ford and UAW were probably still negotiating as recently as a couple hours ago. Uh, Ford continued uh, to be stubborn and not move on certain things. Uh, my, from what I hear overall, all three companies is they – are allergic to the word pension and do not want to reinstate pensions for current workers or uh, to uh, give an increase to retired workers who have gone without uh, a pay increase in their pension funds for you know over a decade. Um, so there's that. I'm pretty sure uh, they're still a decent uh, decent distance away in terms of wage increase. So um, you know. You're almost on strike for a month now uh, as far as the UAW's mindset. So you basically, if you're going to get a deal with all three, you got to get a deal with one first because the strategy has obviously been to pit all three companies against each other. So if you're going to get General Motors and Stellantis to make considerable uh, increases and improvements to their offers, you got to get a good deal with Ford. So Ford is moving at the pace of a tortoise, which it seems like it is. Uh, 
I don't think they had any other choice but to up the ante, which definitely going on strike at one of the most profitable Ford plants does the job. Uh, as far as I know, the only other plant that is as profitable or more profitable would be the Ford, the F-150 plant, which I also believe is in Kentucky. Um, so this definitely uh, ups the ante. I, I think also for those that have been watching our strike coverage from day one, I said, you know, don't don't bank on it, you know, being on an exact schedule, you know, thus far it's been on an exact schedule uh, in terms of, you know, Sean Fain does a broadcast on Fridays, usually the morning and announces, you know, new plants that they're going to go on strike against, or like we saw this past Friday uh, announces they're not going to go on strike at any new plants because they, you know, had a breakthrough with general motors uh, in terms of getting GM to agree in writing uh, to make electric battery plants union. Uh, and part of the overall master union agreement. Uh, but the fact that this is just unexpectedly on a Wednesday night announcing a strike at the biggest plant they've gone on strike at thus far, as far as I know, this is the biggest plant they've gone on strike at, uh, nearly 9,000 workers, shows you that this is not going to be you know tidy and scheduled at all times. And they could technically go on strike at any time. It's not just going to be, you know, on a weekly basis. And now you have this announcement in Kentucky uh, with nearly 9,000 workers, and Fain is going to do his broadcast Friday morning, which is like a little over a day from now. So you could have even more plants that they're going on strike against Friday morning. So I think this is a major deal. I also think, obviously, when uh, the UAW announced this strike, uh, the stand-up strike, there were uh, a good amount of members who were disappointed and felt that uh, the UAW should go on strike at all the plants all at once. Um, and there were workers that felt, you know, you're not really hurting them because you're not on strike at their most profitable plants. Well, this is one of Ford's most profitable plants. Uh, so they will get the message now. Uh, also by waiting nearly a month to go on strike at, you know, a massive plant like this, almost 9,000 workers, uh, you, they were successful in stretching out that strike fund, uh, longer. Uh, I spoke with, I think the union, president in Chicago at the Ford plant who told me if they would have went on strike at all the plants all at once, uh, the strike fund would have lasted only about 10, 11 weeks. Uh, so this obviously stretches it out longer, uh, but big deal. Uh, we will see what announcement comes next in terms of uh, Fane's broadcast on Friday. Uh, my guess, this is just speculation, is a big um, gap right now is among pensions and retirement security for current workers and retired workers for all three companies. I also am guessing Ford has not upped the ante in terms of wages. Uh, reports say that the UAW has moved down a bit and, you know, closer to 30% wages. I never truly thought they were going to get 40% wage, wage increase. I did think it was possible for them to get closer to like 25 to 30% range. Uh, so obviously Ford is not meeting them where they want them to be. Uh, the UAW in terms of wage increases. Uh, Ford has, um, you know, offered a reinstatement of cost of living, which is big. Uh, they have, uh, as far as I can tell, done the best in terms of eliminating the, the two-tier system uh, and uh, guaranteeing that workers would get uh, full-time top rate uh, after a couple months, which is a huge improvement. Uh, but that's not enough. Uh, Ford workers we've spoken with all over this country have been screwed for the last decade plus and deserve the wages, the retirement and everything else that the UA, UAW is demanding. Uh, obviously this strike has, I don't want to say fallen out of the news, but it hasn't been the dominating story uh, in recent days. Even, you know, we were on the road for 25 days. It was no longer the dominant story other than us on the ground. Thanks to you status quo members uh, funding us to be on the ground for 25 days. Hint, hint, sign up if you're not yet a member. If we're going to be able to go back on the ground to cover this strike at some point, we need more signups because it's expensive. In 25 days, we probably, between myself, Tina, Ron, John on the ground, uh, hotels, flights, rent to car food, uh, haven't tallied it yet, but it's it's close to about nine, ten thousand uh, dollars and we're independent. So that's that's a big amount of money to spend. Uh, but we felt it was worth it to cover this important story. Um, and we thank you for sending us there. Uh, but obviously, it hasn't been dominating the news as much, uh, you know, over the last few days. Clearly, and understandably, the situation in Israel and Palestine, which is just horrific, uh, senseless murder, 
kidnapping, uh, rape, uh, horrific. Uh, hum what Hamas did uh, to Israel, and now Israel is horrifically uh, leveling Gaza and, in my view, per perpetrating war crimes. Uh, so obviously the strike has moved to the background a bit, but the workers are still out there holding their signs and picketing, and it's going to be colder soon. Uh, so we'll continue covering this. I'll look into to see if I can find out any more details. Uh, but as Sean Fain said to the big three, you know, tick tock, tick tock.